Hi everybody, welcome back to the sewing room. My name is Chris and this is Sojourns, where we journey into sewing, we cover it all. So stay with me today because we've got a lot of sewing to do together and I'm going to show you how to sew this beautiful top, this neckline, so that it can lay flat and you'll have ultimate success. Welcome to Sojourns. Let's journey into sewing. Hi sewing friends. Today I'm sewing a top by Love Notions. And if you've been with me for a while, if you're a subscriber or tune in often, you might know that I am an ambassador for Love Notions. So you might think that because of that, I've sewn every pattern. Well, I've sewn nearly every pattern, but the Vivace top is a pattern that I haven't sewn before. Now, granted, it's not new, but it's only been out a year, maybe a little less, and I hadn't sewn it before. And i tell you the truth, when it came up for testing, I didn't think it was my cup of tea, so I passed on testing that one. But I've come back to it now, and I'm so happy I did, so there's your first clue. But first of all, let's get into the pattern. Let me tell you about it. And today is a great day to try the Vivace pattern by Love Notions because today it's Feature Friday pattern. And the Vivace is featured for only $5. That's 60% off their normal price. So it was the perfect time for me to try it, the perfect time for you to try it. That link is right down in the description box. It'll take you right to the pattern. Thank you so much. You may have noticed or been familiar with how Tammy names her patterns. If the pattern has a woven option, or if it's made strictly for wovens, she will name it with a musical term. Vivace means brightly, spiritedly. So play that piece of music, it's played brightly or lively. This top is made for wovens and knits. That's excellent. So now you've got a pattern where it's more versatile to start with. Wovens or knits. I've chosen a knit today. It's a stable knit. This is Liverpool. It's a textured double knit. You can see that it's embossed. It's very beautiful. It's red with these silver roses and also some embossed red roses and leaves and things like that. Really nice for this. So this kind of acts like a woven, not so stretchy like a knit, but you can use a knit with up to 40% stretch, or you can use a woven like chambray or crepe or silk. The pattern is one piece with no set in sleeve. It comes right off the shoulder. And if you look here, the line of the pattern comes to here. Here's the dolman style. This sleeve that you see down here, I'll talk about in a minute. It's a dolman style pattern. It comes in shirt length, tunic length, or a dress. It comes in the full size range that Love Notions offers for ladies. That's extra small through 5X. That's wonderful, very inclusive. This piece does come with a full bust piece or a standard bust piece, as with most of the patterns, which is really lovely. One of the features of the Vivace top is this beautiful neckline. Wow. There's a wide V-neck here, maybe that'll help, that is interfaced and lined, and it comes here and crosses over to make this wide, lovely V-neck. This model is not my same measurements. She's a little more busty, a little more shallow chested here, so you'll see this dips down. But when I wear it, it sits exactly flat. The other feature is this pleat. There's a pleat here, and if you see, I can put my finger in it. The pleat runs the width of this here. But it's not sewn anywhere except the top. So it's this soft pleat detail that you get to see, and then it just gently opens as it goes down the length. I made the tunic length. It's so soft and so feminine and so, I don't know why I waited so long to sew it up, but I'm sure glad I did now. So today, I am going to take you through, let's sew this neckline together. It can be a little tricky, might be some fiddly parts, but I'm going to sew that along with you. Close, you'll see how I pin it, how I understitch it, how I sew it, and how I get it to lay so beautifully. And then, you know, we're in fall and winter now, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere. And I wanted to wear this for Christmas because this red, beautifully embossed top looks so holiday for me. And it's coming to that time. 
that I did a little easy pattern. Sew so along with me as I give you a slim fitting long sleeve that attaches to the dolman and I will show you how to measure that so that it is slim fitting because we're going to do the sweet flounce bell cuff, if you will. I like the proportion of the drapey straight tunic with a slim sleeve and then this lovely flounce here. It has only one seam, it's beautiful. I show you how to calculate that and make your own pattern. It is so simple. I show you how to calculate and make a pattern for a slim fitting long sleeve. In the previous video where I did a couple of pattern hacks, I showed you how to make a dolman bishop sleeve. Different, this is different, so hang in there. We're gonna do that together. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm going to model this for you. I'm gonna show you how it hangs on me, how it fits on me, and how those arms drape. So let's get into it. Let's sew the collar of the Vivace top together, and then we'll sew this hack of this beautiful long slim dolman sleeve and our bell cuff. And then I'll be back. All right, so I'm gonna start cutting out my pieces for my Vivace top. I'm going to do the tunic length, and I'm going to start with the extra large, which is my normal, typical size in Love Notions, going by my upper bust. And then I use the full bust piece, and I always blend out to the 2X as I approach the hip area. I measured this dolman sleeve opening here on the XL, and although it will fit and it will give me a little bit of ease, it's not as much as I prefer. So I've decided to extend this halfway between the extra large and the 2X, just recreating the curve and then blending out to my 2X nice and gently, because I'm gonna wanna end up there anyway at the end. You need to make sure that you, mat, you mark any notches on your pattern especially around the neck area for putting on that beautiful wide V band. So over here, there's a notch here on the back. This is the back. Also, this pattern is for wovens and knits, but there are separate pattern pieces. So you need to pay attention to which piece you're using. I am using a knit. So I have here the back piece for a knit. It uses the same piece, whether it's standard or full bust, because it's the back. Only the front would be different for a full or standard bust. But make sure you're using the knit or woven piece accordingly. I turned off the 2X projection when I was marking my notch because I wanted to make sure it was in the right place. There are no more notches to be marked on the back, so I just marked where I wanted to change this, like I talked about, and now I have both on. Make sure after cutting that you mark where that notch is, put your finger there, and mark that also on the back. You'll need to know that later. Okay, here I'm getting prepared to cut out my front piece, and I just wanna remind you of a few things. I'm using the full bust knit version of the pattern. Again, remember there's a knit and a woven, separate pattern pieces. There are a few things you need to mark on this pattern. That is the notch here along the neckline. This pattern gets cut on the fold and then comes up across here. This is the wide, this is that pleat that gets folded over at the front center. So you'll need to mark this pleat. We'll be sewing basting stitch down here. What I've done to the front arm, I've also done to the back, or actually I did the back first, didn't I? So when I, lengthened this and then blended this here. I've done the same thing for the front. This is my front pattern piece. So we're gonna be sewing this from the right side. So you need to transfer this line to the right side of your fabric. And here I have it marked with pins just to make sure that you can see it on this video. And I do have some clips along the way. I wanna make sure my fabric doesn't shift. I'm just going to run a basting stitch, the length of this. This will then form the pleat. We will fold it over and press it and then run a basting stitch along the top as well to keep it in place. So we basted the pleat from the right side when this is folded together. And then I pushed it over to the right, to the right. When you're wearing it, 
this will be the left, but you push it over to the right and I pressed it. Then I basted this pleat in place right here. And you can see it better from the back side. Right here, I basted it. And then I did some stay stitching about two inches up. I did stay stitching from here to the corner, across where I've already basted the pleat and up again. And then you're going to snip into the corner. Here I've snipped into the corners, but not through the stitching and not through the pleat. So here we have the collar pieces. This is my lining because I have the interfacing. I want to clarify that I misspoke here. The lining piece is not interfaced. It's your main piece that is interfaced. I have it done correctly. I just said it wrong. So I've interfaced what we're gonna be calling the lining pieces, they're all interfaced. You take the back piece and you take your front pieces and you put them right sides together. So you'll be seeing the front side of this and you'll be seeing the back side of these. And you stitch them at the shoulder seams with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You do that for your lining pieces. You do the same exact thing for your main pieces. And now what we're going to do is put these two pieces right sides together. Now I have the collar pieces pinned together, right sides together at the shoulder seams first, and then you'll match up the notches that you've transferred, but you are sewing and clipping on the inside curve. So we're going to sew all the way around here with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, here we are with the collar. I have sewn them together on the inside curve, and then I've clipped the seam allowance a little bit here, so it's not so bulky. Now we're going to go over to the machine and we're going to understitch. So that means that we're going to stitch this seam allowance towards the lining. That way it won't flip out when you're wearing it and it will lay nice and flat. Okay, let's understitch. So we have our lining here and we have our seam allowance which is pressed towards the lining. So I have it set up here with a regular straight stitch, regular length, two and a half, and I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an inch so that that seam allowance gets stitched to the lining and that will make for a very beautifully sewn in collar. See how nice and fl uh, flat that lays? How beautiful that looks? And here it is here, stitched right to. So now we'll take it over and press it, and this will press and lay really flat. Now that we have our collar understitched, you can see that there. We put it together so that the right side is over the left side on the wearer side. So it looks just like this, the same direction as your pleat. Your pleat is going this way, your collar is going that way. Right sides together. This is the wrong side, you can see the understitching. Okay. I have sewn the back bodice to the front bodice at the shoulder seams, 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, and press the seams open. And then I have stayed, I have done stay stitching around the entire collar right inside the seam allowance, all the way around. My knit is one of those knits that does not press well. Therefore, I pinned it, I pressed it within an inch of life, <laughs> and then I basted it. I basted that collar. This will help me tremendously when I go to sew it on to the actual garment. So now what we're going to do is flip this over so we have the right side of the collar, that's the one without the understitching, 
and the right side of our vivace. We're going to take the long portion of the collar, right side of the collar, and we're going to lay it right across that top, that squared off portion. And I'm going to pin it right through there. So I've pinned that collar right to the flat portion here. And you can see the cuts come right to the end of the collar. That's where we're going to start sewing. And I'm going to baste my collar on first. Now what we're going to do is start to bring this collar around and clip it, matching up the notches on each piece and the shoulder seams. So now the collar is completely clipped or pinned on right sides together. I still have those pins at the corners because I want to start there. I want to start sewing there to make sure I have a good pivot. And then I'll just go along here. I'm going to baste the collar on first, check it, make sure it lays the way I want, and then I'll go back and serge it on. I'm sewing with the collar down against the machine and the wrong side of the fabric facing me so that I can see these pivot points really well. And uh, now that I have my needle lowered at the first pivot point, I can remove this pin. And I'm going to stitch to the next pivot point, leave my needle in pivot, and then go all the way around. It's a little bit thick here because we have several layers, so just take your time. As I approach the second corner, it might take a little doing to not get a pleat here. And my hands are kind of going to be in the way. I'm very sorry about that. Just want to make sure I can avoid getting a pleat there if I can. There we go. Now I'll leave the needle in and I'll pivot, lining up the edge. There we go. Just continue basting that collar on all the way around. Okay, I'm very pleased with the way this collar went. So here is our Vivace top. I love it. I just love how it came out. The collar looks spectacular. The pleat looks spectacular. I just sewed down the side seams, removed the basting stitches for the pleat. And now, as designed, you would just put the sleeve band onto those short sleeves. But I want to wear this for Christmas and I want to wear it throughout the winter. So let's do this sleeve. Let's create a long sleeve with a flounce at the wrist to really make this dressed up for the holidays. I'll show you how, it's very simple. Let's create the sleeve for our long sleeve vivace. Now on this style of sleeve, I want a slim fitting sleeve to add a wrist flounce. So I want a close sleeve. And what I'm showing you here is my muslin sleeve. And I recommend you do this first before cutting into your good fabric. And this has the same stretch as my main fabric for the tunic we're working on. So I used my leftover to do this and it fit beautifully. So here's how I calculated and made the shape of this sleeve. Measure the opening of your dolman sleeve. Let me get my measurements out here. Yours will be different than mine. If you remember, I graded out that a little bit. I wanted a little bit more room and it's great for me. So I measured this here and that is my line across here. Here is my paper pattern. So this is my line across here, but it's half the amount because we're going to cut this on the fold and sew it there. So for me, it was 16 inches. So this is eight inches here. So I drew an eight inch line on my paper. I tried on my top and I measured from the dolman sleeve down to where I wanted the sleeve to stop and the flounce to start. For me, that's 11.5 inches, including seam allowance of three eighths of an inch at the flounce top and three eighths of an inch where it will connect to the dolman. And that's this length here. So I drew that length. I did a straight line from this to here. I'll show you how we get this shape in a minute. Okay, 
Then, because I wanted the sleeve to kind of taper and fit slim, I measured how far my elbow was down from the dolman, and then I measured around my elbow, giving myself that inch of ease. So that came to 13. We're going to cut this on the fold. So that means that this line will be six and a half. So I drew a line down the center, marked the midpoint of six and a half. Remember there's a line straight down here and a straight down here. And this was the width of my elbow. So now you see we're gonna taper in. Did the same thing at the wrist, or not at the wrist, it comes about six inches or five inches up from the wrist, depending on where you want your flounce to begin. And for me, that came to six point, oh, excuse me, for me, that came to 5.6. I cut that in half, I drew that line here, and then I just tapered and met those lines. So I started here with my quilting ruler, 11 inches straight down, so we had a box centered my elbow width, centered my forearm width, took my quilting ruler from that corner, met that line on this side, met that line on this side. This gives me this shape right here, which is my sleeve. You will cut it on the fold. This gives me this sleeve. Then I tried it on, I slipped it on. It's perfect for me. It's the ease I want, it's the length I want, it's the width I want. Do that first. Now I'm going to cut two of these from my fashion fabric. I'm going to sew them. I used a serger. So this is cut on the fold, serge or sew the long edge together. And then we're going to serge or sew this to the top of the dolman sleeve. Here I have my pattern laid out. Make sure that your stretch is going around your arm. I have the fabric folded over. This is the top. This is my forearm. I'm going to cut two of these on the fold. Okay, sewing on the sleeves. So here I have that sleeve sewn down the long end and I've turned it right side out. Go straight across from the seam and mark the center of your sleeve on the other side. There is no seam there because we are going to line up the seam end with the side seam of our top. We're going to line up this mark with the shoulder seam. And here I've done it for you on this side. It looks great, I tried it on, it fits beautifully. So how we're going to do this is turn your vivace top inside out. We're going to slip your sleeve in so the right side of the sleeve touches the right side of your top. So your top is wrong side up, your sleeve is right side up. And this of course is the top of the sleeve, the wider portion. This is the top, this is your forearm. So we're going to find our seam. We're going to slip our sleeve in here matching up our seam to seam and clip it. And then we're going to take this clip that marked the center and we're going to match that up to the shoulder seam. And then you're just going to clip all the way around. Now, if you added ease at the very top, I did not, I started with the exact measurement plus seam allowance. But if you've added ease, which is perfectly fine, just run a basting stitch around your sleeve and then just pull that a tiny bit if you need to ease that in. Okay, we're at the final step for creating our flounce for our sleeve. And here's an easy formula I came across years ago that I've been using that works beautifully. Okay. You're going to take the circumference of where you want to put your flounce or your circular ruffle. That's the bottom of our sleeve. Mine is 10 inches. You're going to, so mine is 10 inches. You're going to take 10 inches and subtract one inch. That gives you nine inches. We're not gonna deal with pi, but we're gonna come close. 
Now we're going to divide by six. 1.5 inches. 1.5 inches will be the inner circle of our circular ruffle or our pattern that we're going to create. Okay, so we take a large square of paper. Here's some tracing paper. A large square, you can do bigger. I just had enough. And fold it into four equal. Here you have your fold, here's your other fold, and here's the open sides. Okay, so the 1.5 will be our inner circle. Our pattern will end up to be a circle. So you take your little measuring gauge here and you mark down one and a half inches from here, from this side, and from the center, and mark that. Then you decide how long of a flounce do you want. I decided on four and a half inches. You can go longer and always trim it back. I'm not actually going to hem it. I may do a rolled hem, which will look very beautiful, or I may leave it raw because it is a knit and it won't ravel. Um, we'll see what kind of decorative thread I have at the end. But you take that four and a half inches or five inches or four or six, however long yours is going to be, and from this mark you've already made, mark down four and a half inches. And I put a dot here. I did the same thing here. And then from the center, from the center dot, four and a half inches, four and a half, four and a half. And now we're going to close these arcs with our pen. Connect the dots and do the same thing here. Of course, I'm doing this on camera. It may not be that precise, but you can go back and fix it. That's pretty good. Okay, before we cut this, we have to remember that we need seam allowance here because this is the part that's going to attach to our sleeve. So create yourself a little bit of a seam allowance, 3 eighths, a quarter, whatever. And that's where you're going to cut to give yourself that seam allowance. And then take your rotary cutter or your scissors and cut along the large arch and the seam allowance arch. Here I've cut along both, and then we open it up. And this will be our pattern. Here's how you lay out your pattern on your fabric. So we had our pattern, and I'm just gonna open it up so that this is the fold right there. You're going to place the fold on your fabric Give yourself some pattern weights to hold it in place. Cut out the inner circle, cut out the outer circle, and then you will have this. This gets attached to the bottom of the sleeve, right sides together. You can finish this edge with a hem, with a rolled hem, or you can leave it raw if you're working with a pretty knit. You'll cut out two of these. Here's our sleeve. Here's our flounce, right sides together. It's gonna always start at the seam. And you'll just start to pin this to your sleeve all the way around. If you have to stretch your flounce the teeniest bit, the smallest bit, that's perfectly fine. But just go ahead and pin that all the way around. And then take it to your sewing machine or your serger. And here's what you're going to have. It's a sweet, sweet way to finish these sleeves. So I'm going to go and just serge right around or sew right around there. And if you want to finish with a rolled edge, I already have a video on how to do a beautiful rolled edge on a previous make here on YouTube. I will link that in the description box for you. So you can see that there's no sense to recreate it here. Let's come back, try on our gorgeous top and see what we have. Here I am wearing for you my Vivace top for Christmas in this beautiful red embossed Liverpool fabric and our beautiful long sleeve with the bell. I love this little dramatic sleeve. It really makes an impact. It changes up the pattern. So now you can sew the pattern as is originally intended with the short sleeves that would have a little band here for the summer in your lighter weight fabrics. 
And then you can carry it on and get the most value out of your pattern by adding the sleeve, maybe adding a little embellishment here. You can do a rolled hem here if you'd like, and I will link those tutorials down in the description box. Of course, I always link the pattern down in the description box for you. Here's the sweet little pleat that opens up. I'm wearing the tunic, tunic length, and as you'll see here, I'm ready for Christmas. I know I'll see you before then, but if you celebrate, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays.